Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing Dumper Breadcrumbs After Breakup. I provide audio coaching to help people try and get their ex back or get a new girlfriend or boyfriend. Check out my website for more details. www.dateme.tips Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing Dumper Breadcrumbs After Breakup. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you may be wondering what it means if your ex sends you short, seemingly insignificant messages. In today's podcast, I'm going to be discussing three points to consider about dumper breadcrumbs after breakup. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is dumpers often test for water. So if you've been dumped and you want to try to get your ex back, you're probably thinking to yourself, what's it going to be like if and when my ex reaches out to me? Well, what I can do right now is explain to you the likely scenario of what will play out. Now, of course, there is no 100% guaranteed way to get your ex back. And unfortunately, some of you dumpies won't receive texts from your ex. Additionally, those of you that do, of course, I can't say definitively exactly how it will be. But via my research, I will let you know right now what is most likely to be if you receive contact from your ex. So firstly, we can separate this into two sections, whether it is necessary or unnecessary contact. If you are a dumpy and you want to get your ex back, you need to be making sure that you fully understand and decipher these differences. If you receive contact from your ex, which is necessary, then unfortunately, this isn't pushing you further along in reconnecting. This is just something that they necessarily need to reach out to you about. They need to sort things out. You know, maybe they've left their laptop at your house. And this is something necessary for them to get back. Okay, something expensive, something valuable, something that they need. If they reach out to you in this way and they ask for their laptop back, this isn't due to the fact that they want to reconnect. This is because they need their laptop back. Now, this doesn't mean you should be rude about it. I suggest that you always try to behave in a happy, carefree and fun way. Also, keeping things on point if and when somebody reaches out to you for a reason, which of course in this instance is necessary. If they reach out to you asking for their laptop, you should be letting them know that's fine and trying to arrange a point for them to pick it up or you to deliver it. Now, I don't suggest that you try and use this as an opportunity to flirt, etc., because they aren't ready for this. You know, they're reaching out for a necessary reason. But what about if they reach out for something which is unnecessary? Why do they do this, especially if the message is quite short? Well, this is something that we like to refer to as the indirect, direct approach. It's indirect because it doesn't seem to be getting to the true point of the message. Okay, the true point of an unnecessary message is that they are thinking about you. But they're very unlikely to be saying, I miss you. They're very unlikely to be saying, please, let's get back together straight away. You know, this is not often the case. If a message is received and it's unnecessary... This doesn't mean it's going to be as obvious as, let's just get back together right now. I've been thinking about you 24-7. It's much more likely to be, as I said, the indirect, direct approach. They're reaching out to you directly, but it's indirect in how they're communicating. They're reaching out in reality because they're thinking about you. They're missing you to some degree as they wouldn't reach out to you. But the way they do this is probably not going to be in the Disney-like way that I've just described. It's much more likely that it's going to be something quite basic. Now, what do I mean by basic? Well, they often test the water. You know, they're also somewhat fearful of how you may respond. They're probably thinking you might get angry about their reaching out to you. You might be somebody who is very frustrated about their contact. So you might get something as basic as, hi, how are you? You might get something which is a little bit more dressed up as something else than saying, hey, have you seen that your favourite TV show is on tomorrow night? You know, this is unnecessary. Why would a dumper reach out to a dumpy 
to speak about television? Why would a dumper reach out to a dumpy to ask if even you're okay? Now, you might be saying, well, they're going to be reaching out to me because they care for me on some level. And that is the point. They do care for you on some level. Whether or not this is romantically inclined or whether or not this is due to worry, pity or platonic friendship, well, this isn't something that can be discovered right now. I'm going to be speaking more about this later in today's podcast, so please keep listening. But the thing to remember is that dumpers will often test the water. They're very unlikely to be really spewing out all of their feelings and emotions straight away. They're probably also wondering how you're going to react. Maybe they end of a relationship due to certain behaviour traits that you show. Maybe you become somebody who is very obsessive, needy or jealous, and they want to send out something which is short and sweet to see how you react. Always try to behave in a happy, carefree and fun way, but also try to behave in a calm, stable and confident way. This will really help that if your expert dumper is testing the water, that you come across as positively and they will then want to try to take things further. Now, if you want to understand more about the communication stage and how I suggest you react to a message from your expert dumper, you may want to consider my audio coaching service. My podcasts have to be generalised. And if you want help with your unique specific situation and your unique specific dynamic that you and your ex have, please check out my website, www.dateme.tips, for more details about my audio coaching and how we can speak one-on-one and strategize somewhat to try and improve your chances of one day getting your ex back. But ultimately, point number one, dumpers will test the water most of the time. So this could be why you get a message which seems short and almost insignificant because they're trying to see how you react. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast about dumper breadcrumbs after breakup. And point number two is bored dumpers still have options. Now, one of the main arguments against breadcrumbs is that, look, they're just bored. Look, they've got nothing on. That's why they're reaching out to me. But what I would say is that bored dumpers still have options. If you receive contact which is unnecessary, this is because somebody's thinking about you. Even if they are bored, they have options. Your ex, the dumper, can be contacting other people. They can be doing other things. They can be spending their time in other ways other than contacting someone that you are thinking right now they don't even care about. You as a dumpy do not believe that your ex, the dumper, thinks about you at all. And yet they've reached out to you for an unnecessary way. Like I said in point number one, if it's necessary, that isn't a clue that they want to get back together right now. But if it's unnecessary, then at least they're thinking about you. They're thinking about you to the point where they've reached out to you and they don't need to do this. They do have options. So for everybody who argues, breadcrumbs are pointless. You know, I would always say that the largest oak tree can grow from the smallest acorn. And from the smallest text message can grow a relationship. It doesn't happen every time. And you need to manage the communication stage effectively and correctly. But if you do, there is every chance that one day you can reconnect. And therefore, even if you receive a short message, I suggest that you respond. Like I said earlier, if you want more support with this, contact me for more information about my audio coaching service. But what we need to understand in point number two is that bored dumpers still have options. Even if they have nothing else to do, they don't have to contact you. You know, on one hand, you're probably thinking they never care for me, they never think of me. But on the other hand, if they do reach out, you're making excuses for them and say, well, they was bored. It doesn't mean anything. Well, they don't have to reach out to you. So it must mean something. They are thinking about you at least to some degree. We don't know why exactly. But what we do know, if it's unnecessary, is that you are on their mind and they want to reach out for whatever reason that may be. If it's unnecessary, they are thinking about you. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about dumper breadcrumbs after breakup. And point number three is some mysteries are solved in person. So you receive contact from your ex, you realise that it's unnecessary contact, but you didn't have to do this. And now you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, okay, so this means they're thinking about me, but in what way are they thinking about me? Are they worrying about me? 
because they are thinking I need pity and support? Are they missing certain elements about me and they want a platonic friendship? Or do they miss me romantically? Okay, now these things can't necessarily be discovered via the initial message or messages from your ex and then via yourself back and forth. These are things which need to be discovered further down the line. And that's why it's so important that you meet your ex ASAP. The communication stage, I believe, is the toughest part of trying to get your ex back. My version of a no contact rule is probably insignificant in what you have to achieve during the communication stage because you need to get your ex to meet you in person. And I can speak about this via audio coaching as well as the hints, tips and advice that I give across the other podcasts that I've uploaded. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out all of the playlists. But when we go through the communication stage, if you do this effectively, if you do this successfully, you will get to the point where you meet your ex in person and that is where the mysteries are solved. You know, some mysteries are solved in person. Some things can only be discovered and understood once you are together. Yes, you and your ex can text about things. You may even have telephone calls, but this is not like looking into the eyes of your ex. Even a video call is not as powerful as meeting your ex in person. And therefore, some things won't really be understood until you're together. Now, I don't suggest you give your ex ultimatums. I don't suggest that you quiz your ex excessively on certain topics because this could frighten them away before you even had a chance to meet. You've got to remember that you are judging your ex somewhat right now, but they are also judging you. You're both almost on probation. They don't fully know how they feel and neither do you. You know, you need to wow your ex in person by how attractive you have now made yourself since the breakup, not only emotionally, but physically as well, making sure you have great personal hygiene, smell fantastic, look your best and be your best. You can't do this over the phone. So whether or not you are thinking the texting is going well, up until you meet, the decisions won't be made. If you're having good communication with your ex and then you meet, but unfortunately, you've not took pride in your appearance, your ex may be turned off at this stage. Maybe you'll be turned off at this stage about your ex. Like I said, they are also on probation. But the fact is that some mysteries are solved in person. Some things can't be decided via text. And whether or not your ex has reached out due to a request of platonic friendship, romantic feelings, or whether they just pity you right now, you might not necessarily know until you arrange to meet. And therefore, it's so important that you do. And that is why I speak about my audio coaching, because I can't describe every single possible dynamic between every single person that listens to my channel. I have a wide demographic of between 18 and over 60, both men and women heterosexual and homosexual relationships. You know, I can't speak about every possible dynamic and ultimately yours will always be unique, even to somebody's who seems fairly similar. So what I can say is that my version of a no contact rule is the best way to start things off if you are the dumb P. Moving through communication stage is so important and you must arrange a meet ASAP. A meeting is where the mysteries can be solved. But what I can't say during the podcasts is your specific circumstances. So if you want support, you know what to do. Dateme.tips is the website to go. But always remember, live your best life. And even if you don't get your ex back, you can and will find somebody even better. With or without your ex, you will have a positive future. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.